classes resumed at Zephyr Hills High School this morning for the first time since a student was killed in a stabbing on Friday. 16-year-old Tavarian Sermons was hanging out with friends in Wesley Chapel when it all happened. Our Eric Waxer joins us now live from Zephyr Hills where Sermons' death has left a lot of people grieving right now. Good afternoon, Eric. Yeah, Dia, at the school right now, classes are going on. According to the school district, Sermons has dozens of relatives in this area, and many of them attend the school. For them and others here at the high school, grief, grief counselors are here to help. He was just 16, active in sports, and according to his family, someone who never went looking for trouble. But today at Zephyr Hills High School, experts are helping Tavarian Sermons classmates deal with his death. Molly Blair coordinates Pasco County's grief counseling program. We listen to what their concerns are, what they might have heard. Sometimes there are rumors or myths that need to be dispelled. And then we kind of just take them where they are and address any, you know, any feelings or any follow-up that needs to occur. Plans are in the works to help raise money for funeral expenses. Meanwhile, Sermon's mother was too upset to talk to us over the weekend. His aunt still can't believe this happened. It's terrible. Um, I never thought in a million years he was at my house the night before. I had just talked to him on the phone that morning. I never thought in a million years that he would be here today and gone tomorrow. The Pasco Sheriff's Office says an argument in the Meadow Point neighborhood of Wesley Chapel between a group of teens escalated to violence when 18-year-old Cleve Gittins showed up with a knife at the clubhouse and stabbed Sermons to death. His friends spent the weekend coping with each other and through social media, but counselors are still seeing a range of emotions today. A lot of sadness. I'm a lot of students just needing some place to be safe with their emotions and, you know, either talk privately or just have a break from the regular setting. The alleged killer has been in jail since Friday. I checked with the Pasco Sheriff's Office. They say nothing new that they're going to release today on this investigation, including what started this whole thing that led to Sermon's death. Live in Zephyr Hills, Eric Waxler, ABC Action News. Because teens are constantly evolving, it is crucial that counselors stay up to date on teen social media and their pop culture. By doing this, counselors can be proactive and prepared to address any unhealthy trends teens may be experimenting with that could cause the death of a teen. Counselors should be educated with the reality of the numbers of deaths that teens are faced with daily. According to the National Center for School Crisis and Bereavement, by the time children complete high school, most will experience the death of a family member or friend. Also, shocking but true, nearly 40% of teens will experience the death of a peer, and 20% will have witnessed a death, explained the National Center for School Crisis and Bereavement. The types of death and grief experienced are far-reaching and sensitive topics. To help counselors understand the phases of grief, I have included a short clip of, of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross stages of grieving.
Because death is such a life-impacting event, it must be dealt with intentionally, purposefully, and professionally by the school counselors and staff members. Counselors should follow legal guidelines for reporting any students who are grieving in a manner beyond the services the school can provide. Moreover, counselors should adhere to all necessary mandatory reporting. Protocols have been established at schools, and schools will vary, for how to address the sensitive issues of death, and those should be followed. I would like to leave you with a brief clip as a reminder of the reality of teen grief. Counselors should understand the important role that they play in providing high schoolers with grief counseling. Grief counselors will be at Otay Ranch High School to help students and staff deal with the suicide of 17-year-old Stephen Lou from that footbridge on Friday night. Uh, some of his friends say that Lou was bullied. New in this half hour, 10 News reporter Marie Coronel there is live with revealing Facebook posts about the young man's state of mind. Marie. Well, Bill, right now we are standing on the bridge where you can see this growing memorial. You have candles, pictures, signs, and even running shoes that people have left because Stephen Liu was a member of the track team. Right now, I want to get to one of the troubling Facebook posts that one of Liu's friends shared only with 10 News, where Liu asks him, quote, do you ever feel like people get what they don't deserve? Adding, quote, I feel like I want to die. Over the weekend, friends and classmates held a vigil for Lou after police say he jumped off this walking bridge right in front of Otay Ranch High School where he was a student. This morning, the medical examiner's office tells 10 News Lou was only 17 years old. Friends who were trying to make sense out of this tells 10 News he was a victim of bullying, though police and the school district say they do not believe that played a role in Lou's death. Now back out here live looking through these notes. You have that one right there that says everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Be kind always. And then here you also have the suicide hotline uh, right there. 1-800-273-TALK. So that is that is the theme that we're getting looking through uh, these notes. We also know that Lou's classmates will be wearing neon colors and will be carrying luggages to school today because they say that's how they will always remember him. We're live from Chula Vista this morning. Marie Cornell, 10 News. Thank you, Marie.